Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you please stand with me and pledge of allegiance. And after the pledge of allegiance, we'll have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we're moving on to our public comment period. Has everyone signed up who wishes to be heard today during our public comment period? If you haven't, you can submit the paper to our clerk here. Public comment is five minutes that any individual can speak upon any topic they wish to speak upon. Uh, the council members at that time cannot address you or answer any questions from you. Those things can happen at a later date, um, so at a later time, excuse me, in the agenda. Um, so now we're moving forward. Can the clerk please call the first speaker? Alana Klein. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. If you were at the second December meeting uh, last year, um, this is very personal for me, and as that last one was. Um, today, actually coincidentally, is World Semicolon Day, which is to bring awareness to uh, people who suffer from depression, suicidal thoughts, and the, the reason for the semicolon is your story is not over, that's a quote. Um, my point to bring this to your attention today is I know you have a larger public voice than I, and uh, to bring out awareness on your social media, if you do that, um, public appearances, uh, newsletters, appearances at hospitals, the Capital District Psychiatric Center on New Scotland Revenue. Um, I suffer from severe depression. That's not the same thing as suicide. Um, not necessarily the same thing as suicidal thoughts, tendencies, actions. But it's, it's a crippling and debilitating problem. It can really mess with your mental health. It can be tough to hold down a job. It can be tough to enjoy anything in life. It can be tough to roll out of bed. It can be tough to fall asleep. It can be tough to stay asleep. It can be tough to stay awake. It's, it, it comes, it can sometimes come out of nowhere. You could be laughing, enjoying, and having a pleasant day, and just one little thing goes wrong, and it, it shuts you down. So again, I'd just like to um, see an effort by this council, and I don't know every specific of everything you, you guys do, and you guys do a fantastic job at, uh, everything that you do, I'm just asking you to put one more thing on your personal agendas. Um, so many people in this world suffer from depression, from suicide, and that's not just minority communities, LGBTQ communities, even though those are communities that are at higher risk. Um, veterans is another one. I think something like 22 veterans a day commit suicide, or one veteran every 22 hours, it's something similar to that. Uh, we just need to try to make this world a better place and sometimes I, I can tell you that I'm, an al I'm also an alcoholic and that definitely doesn't help, it definitely contributes to the depression, but one thing that keeps me sober is finding ways to be active, finding ways for activism. Um, I always make a commitment to show up at these meetings and speak and um, not drink during the day on Mondays. I'm, I'm probably gonna be drinking later tonight, but <laughs> um, it's just sometimes you need to find something 
that is your voice or is some enjoyment in your life. Um, and it's not dependent on success. I'm in the best position I've ever been in as far as my job goes, as far as economically, as far as my apartment, as far as stability and housing, as far as being accepted for who I am. That doesn't necessarily excuse you from depression at all. Robin Williams once had a quote, um, and I'm probably paraphrasing here, but the saddest people in the world try their hardest to make other people laugh because they know what it's like to feel worthless. You have one minute left. Thank you. And they don't want anyone to feel like that. I I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. Uh, they were an extremely successful uh, rock rap musical group for almost two decades. One day he just hung himself because it was a two year or two month anniversary of the death of his friend. So again, if you could just take an effort to bring awareness to this problem, uh, I think it would really benefit um, many people in this community, many of whom were silent. Thank you for your time. Boycott the NRA, Black Lives Matter. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. And clerk, please call the next speaker. Good evening. My name is Mark Ronich. I live at 300 Hackett Boulevard in Albany. My opening comments are directed at the eight members who, uh, who enjoyed a re-election and not the freshman members, but because I gotta tell you, I think that you guys must be tired of hearing people speak during public comment period. I mean, you just don't listen. You don't listen to what the public says to you and you don't act on it. You know, I've been coming here for a few years listening to people whine, carp, and complain I can understand your situation when I had issues that I tried to bring to the Common Council. All I've heard was silence, including from my own councilman. It's just plain disrespectful and rude. A lot of my comments have been made about the PEG Access Oversight Board. And when I make those comments, uh, the, I get no response afterwards. I don't see any changes afterwards. It's really... Uh, it's really discouraging. Now, since many of you are new to the process and may not be desensitized to the public's comments, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try to bring out the issues here because there's a problem on the PEG board, and one of the problems is that there's n still, four months into this year, no connection between the Common Council and the PEG Access Oversight Board. There is no formal connection. There's no ad hoc committee. There's no uh, committee that's not, that there's no of the standing committees that's not, uh, the PEG responsibilities have not been rolled into that. And no one seems to care four months into the year. And no one questions this and no one says to the incumbents, those who have been reelected, why are you dragging your feet? Why don't you care about this? You can let this go all you want. I mean, you think this is responsible. This is what, what annoys me. Uh, and I'm, quite frankly, I would strongly recommend that the three people who were on, well, two of the three people who are still here, who were on the previous PEG ad hoc committee, should not be on the new, newly, if there's a newly constituted PEG ad hoc committee, those two people should not be on there. I have nothing to do with this because they've proved that they have been failures when they tried. They tried. Now let's see results. Right now, the PEG Access Oversight Board is going backwards in the sense that they can't even get a quorum. Okay? You like that? You're okay with that? You don't have a problem with that? You don't speak up? I don't know. It's it just four months now, we, uh, you know, I was on the PEG Access Oversight Board. No one here had the courtesy to tell me, no, you're not going to be reappointed. They just simply reappointed the other three. 
and let me just stand out there wondering what's going on. Well, that's rude disrespe and disrespectful. You appointed me to, do a, to have a three-year term, and I was able to fulfill two and a half of the three years, but no one had the courtesy to say to me, look, Mark, we really don't want you to continue on the pegboard. You just simply take an action and majority rule or something quiet and sneaky like that, and then the previous chair of the ad hoc committee doesn't even have the courtesy to say hello and talk to me? That's rude and disrespectful. And I'm appalled. And, and she goes ahead and You have one minute left, sir. That's good. I'm happy I got one minute left. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. And I go ahead and I get called. I, I, she goes ahead and calls the, the uh, security officers downstairs. And then she goes ahead and walks out and then walks back in with attorneys on her side. I mean, this is not a way to deal with the public. And I'm hoping something changes here. I'm really hoping that you give people more respect than what you gave me. Otherwise, you're going to see this whole city going downhill. We don't even have people interested in uh, being show producers. And we don't have the ad hoc committee can't get a quorum. I don't know. I hope that you'll re-examine this and you'll light a fire under someone's butt. Thank you. Thank you. Can the clerk please call the next speaker? Hello, my name is Robert Mengel. I'm president of Albany Fire, uh, Permanent Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2007. Uh, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words this evening. Earlier, this, uh, earlier today, we put a short article in all your mailboxes. Uh, the article is a quick read on why the Red X placarding system is so vitally important to public safety. There are over 25,000 parcels of property in the city of Albany. 800 to 1,000 are vacant at any given time. Of those, 400 to 450 have red X's, meaning they are the most dangerous ones of all. It is an obtrusive sign in the neighborhood, but it's supposed to be that way to warn the public of the dangers that are lurking inside each of those houses. The people the signs protect are police, ambulance workers, firefighters, DGS, the water department, and the public at large. There has been talk of dispatch alerting emergency workers to the status of the vacant buildings if the placards were to be taken down. That is simply unfeasible as the city stands today. Currently, our dispatchers do not have a standard operating procedure in place to notify us firefighters over the radio if the, uh, of these problems. Also, what are we supposed to do when we're on the street or we see if we drive past a fire? The real issue in the city is absenteeism and apathy please look to other ways that, uh, to take down the signs, such as fixing the houses. Please don't penalize public safety by re uh, removing the placards. This is a federal program. Chicago institu instituted this pr uh, placarding program only after two firefighters died in a vacant building fire. Don't let that happen here in Albany. Thank you. Thank you. Can the clerk please call the next speaker? Hello, Jason Mutford, Ward 13, Citizen Advocate. I just had a question about um, <coughs> resolutions introduced 17.42.18R. I'll read the resolution. Resolution of the Common Council confirming the appointment of William G. Kelly as Corporation Council. At this current time, right behind me is the posting for a Friday public comment period for that exact appointment, uh, dated Friday, April 27, 2017. I believe the 17 is actually a typo. There is no such date. It would be Friday, April 27th, 2018. But it seems that the public comment period is moot, considering we're already considering confirming him according to that resolution. No? It's an introduction? OK. That was misunderstood then. All right, thank you for clarifying. 
seeing that we have no other speaker signed up for public comment, public comment this time will be closed. Moving on to the next item on our agenda, approval of minutes from previous meeting, Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. Pres <coughs> Mr. President. I move the approval of the minutes of the April 2nd meeting. Do we have a second on that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Minutes approved. Moving on. Reports of standing committees. Mr. O'Brien. The General Services Committee will meet tomorrow uh, at 5.30 for a discussion of how street paving decisions are made. And uh, you all should have gotten by email copies of two reports. One is how the criterion for how streets are rated with scores of between one and 10. And the other is an actual 2015 edition of a block-by-block -block rating by the CDTC of every street in the city of Albany. And I would also note that uh, Michelle offered the whole document is, I think, 192 pages long. So Michelle offered that if any council member contacts her to make a copy of the certain streets that they're interested in, she will happily do so and uh, have them available at the meeting. So we look forward to participation. The only other point I want to make, not related to streets, is what was discussed in the uh, caucus tonight. Uh, Michelle also sent out to everybody an electronic copy of an overview of uh, the solid waste planning process for the years 2017, 18, and 19, and also a uh, overview of the uh, proposals for a transfer station. And I think, uh, you know, we will uh, try and schedule a general services meeting to get a report on that planning process. But as you can see from those documents that were sent out, at least on the transfer station planning process, we are approximately six months to seven months behind. So, um, I will try and notice a meeting for that uh, within the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Ms. Fahey? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the planning, the Council's Planning and Economic Development Committee will be meeting this Thursday, the 19th, to interview applicants for the uh, IDA and CRC boards. Um, and we will be reviewing and confirming two appointments to the Historic Resources Commission of John McEnany and Chris Hacker. And then on Thursday, April 26, next Thursday, uh, we will be interviewing applicants for the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Igo. Thank you. Mr. Kimbrough. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, next Thursday, uh, the 26th, the Housing and Community Development uh, Committee will be meeting to review and discuss the year 44 HUD funding. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shea. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the uh, Finance Committee met on uh, April 2nd, April uh, 10th, and then um, today before caucus to consider all of the remaining bond ordinances. Um, we have two that are being uh, held, and they are for uh, the uh, facility improvements for the Albany Police Department and the Albany Fire Department. Uh, those two are actually being consolidated uh, in uh, the um, approvals for all city buildings uh, with a reduction of $47,000 uh, because there's money in uh, prior bonds for uh, jail cell renovations that includes uh, some jail cell uh, renovations. Uh, of the 
police uh, department uh, bonds. We, uh, all of them were passed out of committee uh, other than the uh, facility improvements um, as, with no amendments except for the roadway safety program was reduced by $468,000. Uh, that is not because we're anticipating uh, fewer projects uh, but we're looking to uh, use um, prior bonding money uh, f uh, uh, previously authorized bonding money that was left over from uh, many, several other bonds uh, for th those projects and also uh, some existing projects. Uh, for the uh, Parks and Rec creation, uh, we, um, we had one bond that was reduced by $30,000 uh, because prior bonding will be used for the purchase of an SUV. Um, and we um, also considered uh, changes to the types of equipment that will be purchased for snow removal, uh, but did not change the amount of that bond. Um, and finally, um, we uh, increased the amount of bonding for playground improvements and equipment uh, by $50,000 in recognition of the fact that there is uh, some of the projects done last year in 2017 need to be paid for uh, out of uh, additional bonded funds, and we did not want to reduce the uh, playground projects that are anticipated for 2018. Uh, we do not have any future meetings uh, scheduled at this time. However, at some point we will be uh, looking to meet with the treasurer to listen to uh, the fourth quarter report from 2017 and also the first quarter report for 2018. And I will let people know when that is scheduled. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Any more reports on standing committees? None. Seeing none. No reports on ad hoc committees. Moving to considerations of ordinances. Going to ordinance introduced. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. I noticed the introduction of ordinance 254218. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. That's a referral to the law committee. Thank you. Mr. Shea. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice uh, ordinance 26.42.18 for introduction. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance amending ordinance 9.21.18 entitled an ordinance authorizing certain projects by the City of Albany, New York at a maximum estimated cost of $1,125,000 and authorizing a lease financing or $1,125,000 serial bonds of said city to pay the cost thereof, renovations to city buildings, as adopted by the Albany County Council on March 5th, 2018, in relation to NCP authorization thereunder to a maximum limit of $1,520,000. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd now like to make a motion requesting unanimous consent uh, to take up uh, ordinance 264218 tonight for consideration and a vote. Is there a second on that motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Ms. Duchesne. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice ordinance 26.42.18 for passage and ask for a roll call vote thereon. Since the clerk just read the ordinance, uh, is there any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Marinay? Yes. Ms. Atlayer? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Bosco? Yes. Ms. Beatty? Yes. Ms. Darrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Holy? Yes. Mr. Ivo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. 15 for purpose, zero abstentions, zero abstentions. Ordinance passes. 
Moving to ordinance, still with ordinance introduced, uh, Ms. Love. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance of the Common Council authorizing the sale of Olena Lace of a city owned vacant lot at 214th Street Street. Mr. Conti? Uh, Correct, man. No, no committee will refer on that. Okay. Or the next, okay. Uh, Ms. Love. Clerk, please read the ordinance, please. An ordinance of the Common Council authorizing the sale to Habitat for Humanity Capital District, Inc. of a city-owned vacant lot at 245 Orange Street. Thank you. Moving to ordinances held, Ms. Duche. Or Mr. President, or before that. So, uh, so on ordinances held, um, ordinance, usually I say which ones are coming up. Uh, ordinance uh, item number two, um, ordinance 122118 and item number eight, ordinance 182118 are held and the remaining ones uh, are up for a vote. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Ms. Touche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice ordinance 11.21.18 for pass and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing certain purchases by the city of Albany, New York at a maximum estimated cost of $864,500 and authorizing a refinancing or the issuance of $864,500 serial bonds of said city to pay the cost thereof vehicle. Any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Ms. Atelier? Yes. Ordinance passes. Ms. Doshe. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice Ordinance 13.21.18 as amended and asked for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? Any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Ms. Atelier? Yes. Mr. Gallery? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Doshe? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Ms. Bell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Mr. Idle? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ordinance passes. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice Ordinance 14.21.18 and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? Any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Ms. Atelier? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Conti? Yes. Ms. Oshel? Yes. Ms. Haley? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Bell? Yes. Mr. Flint? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Mr. Idle? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Ordinance passes. <coughs> Ms. Duche. I notice uh, Ordinance 15.21.18 and ask for a vote thereon. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizes certain purchases and projects by the City of Albany, New York at a maximum estimated cost of $200,000 and authorizing the refinancing or the issuance of $200,000 serial bonds of 
That's city indicated ball for Catholic safety program. Is there any discussion on the ordinance? Mr. Shea. I note that uh, while I am the sponsor of this as chair of the finance committee, I will be voting no on this, uh, and I wanted to explain my vote. This is a request for uh, $200,000 in bonding for um, crowd control barriers, cones, and uh, variable message display boards. Uh, the amount being spent on um, cones and um, crowd control is about $76,000. Uh, uh, and uh, we have in a prior bond account uh, from 2014, $131,000 uh, for that purpose, uh, which is now, uh, when I called that to the attention of the uh, traffic engineering office, they decided to put that through for forward for, or reserve it for additional vehicle uh, variable message display boards. Um, I have um, some difficulty uh, with that uh, for a number of reasons. We have a very overworked traffic engineering uh, office, um, and they have a lot of projects uh, on the schedule with regard to over $2 million has been bonded in the last eight years uh, that has not yet been used uh, for replacing traffic signals and other road safety uh, items. I would like to see those projects uh, get the full attention of the traffic engineering department. The uh, location of these variable message display boards, which they currently have seven of, and they could also use the money from 2014 to purchase another two, um, uh, they, there is um, a labor cost associated with bringing those to different locations. Uh, we do not have any policies or clear procedures with regard to the placement of those items and for whom they're going to be used. We do not charge fees when they are used for construction projects, for uh, developments, uh, when there is uh, roadway safety issues. Uh, or, uh, and that is something that I think that the developers should be absorbing the cost and we should have a policy of that. When I spoke to uh, Mr. Trudeau and uh, Chief Sears about this, Chief Sears says that he approves individually each one of the locations of these. Now, frankly, I would rather have a policy in place and having our chief of police uh, attending to different things rather than um, reviewing these on an individual basis. I'm concerned that the decisions being made may be arbitrary and capricious because we don't have a set policy with regard to this. And as I have noted, they do have $131,000 uh, from 2014 that could be fo put forward for this purpose that would leave them shy just uh, $70,000 uh, for their initial request uh, that they uh, made this year um, and I would rather hold off on that until we have some policies and procedures in place and we take a, a closer look at that. So I will be voting no on this particular bond ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Any further discussion? Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be voting yes on this. Um, the variable message display boards, uh, which are actually used a lot in my area, uh, they do serve a very important purpose. Right now, for example, today, saw uh, two, one related to the uh, construction project on Henry Johnson, which is a long-term project. It's gonna have major traffic implications. They're very useful to alerting drivers of the, a project that's about to start or ongoing so that people can know in advance and potentially uh, alternate their travel routes, also being used for the Madison Avenue project. Uh, but they're also used for special events. And uh, this is, we're coming up to the time of the year when my particular area gets inundated with special events, uh, especially events in the park with Tulip Festival, where again we come up with uh, uh, no parking uh, restrictions, a uh, number of other events, Lark Fest, or, or, or all these events that, that happen, these boards are very helpful. There are a lot of runs that occur in the park as well at this time of year. Uh, they're very helpful, again, in terms of alerting people in advance so that people know 
uh, especially on weekends when people tend to park in the park and, and park their, leave their cars parked through the weekend, that they don't get caught uh, in terms of being ticketed and towed uh, because they didn't realize that there was an event going on they had to move their car. Uh, they've been also been useful for quality of life issues, uh, particular with uh, motorcycle noise, for example, in the summer, uh, in terms of reminding people and motorcyclists of the noise ordinance. And even though that sounds like it doesn't do anything, it does have a noticeable impact on the level of noise that we sometimes experience on Lark Street. Um, one of the things we discovered is because the, you, they, these signs are not always available when you want them or need them because of the limitations that are on them or the availability, the numbers that we have. But I do think that they really serve a useful purpose um, to the extent of being able to provide the public with information. Uh, and it, one of the most difficult things we have nowadays is how do you inform the public? It used to be in the old days, you had the radio and television and newspaper. That's no longer effective. You gotta find a lot of other mechanisms to do that. Social media, we use social media, not everybody is connected with that. But the, the, uh, the variable message boards are very useful in terms of alerting the public to things that are happening, whether it's major construction projects, special events, uh, snow emergency requirements, which again is another area where it's really important. And to the extent that we notify people in advance of some of th these things that are, that are happening that might have ticket and tow consequences, we're protecting the public. Uh, so I, I do find these valuable. Um, I, and uh, I would uh, encourage members to vote yes on this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Conti. And I, I greatly respect all the work that Councilmember Doshe has done, and it's not to take anything away from her concerns and the valuable work she's done as chair of finance committee. Thank you. Mr. Igo. Uh, well said, said, Richard. I think one thing that was omitted is that these message signs can save the city money. Okay, instead of standing a cop at certain intersections, wherever, say up here, okay, the people are going to see you, road closed up ahead, and it can save the money in the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Igo. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can a clerk please call the roll? Mr. Abstain. Yeah. Ms. Abstain? Yes. Yes. Abstain. Twelve affirmative, two abstentions, one negative. Ordinance passes. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice ordinance 16.21.18 and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? Any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Abdir? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Dochette? Yes. Ms. Vady? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. 15 affirmative, zero negative, zero abstentions. Ordinance passes. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice ordinance 17.21.18 and ask for its passage. Can the clerk please call, um, excuse me, the clerk please read the ordinance. An ordinance authorizes certain purchases by the City of Albany, New York at the maximum estimated cost of $535,000 and authorizes the lease financing or the issuance of $535,000 serial bond of said city to pay the cost thereof to pump the pumping apparatus. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Ms. Abdir? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Dochette? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Ms. O'Brien? 
Yes. Ordinance passes. Ms. Touche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice Ordinance 19.21.18 as amended. I note the amount on this has been increased to $225,000. Thank you. Uh, can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing certain projects by the City of Albany, New York at a maximum estimated cost of $225,000 and authorizing the refinancing or the issuance of $225,000. Burial bonds of said city to pay the cost thereof. Equipment. Any discussion on the ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Renan? Yes. Ms. Eclair? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Rochette? Yes. Ms. Davies? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Holy? Yes. Mr. Ivo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ordinance passes. Ms. Touche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice Ordinance 20.21.18 as amended and as for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing certain purchases by the City of Albany, New York at the maximum estimated cost of $35,000 and authorizing a refinancing for the issuance of $35,000 serial bonds in said city to pay the cost thereof, vehicles, any discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Renan? Yes. Ms. Eclair? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Rochette? Yes. Mr. Ms. Davies? Yes. Pardon me, Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Holy? Yes. Mr. Ivo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Ordinance passes. <laughs> Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. Our last bonding ordinance of the year, 21.21.18, I ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing certain purchases by the City of Albany, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of $99,100 and authorizing a refinancing or the issuance of $99,100 serial bonds of said city to pay the cost thereof, snow removal equipment. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Renan? Yes. Ms. Atler? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Rochette? Yes. Ms. Davies? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Holy? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. 15 affirmative, zero negative, zero abstentions. Final ordinance, bonds passes. Moving on, Ms. Duche. I notice ordinance 24.41.18. I note that the R should come off of that, uh, and I ask for passage uh, of this of, in a roll call vote thereon. Thank you. Uh, can a clerk please read the ordinance, please? construction and maintenance of the retaining wall and related footing. Any discussion on this ordinance? Mr. Holy. Uh, Mr. President, I'm just a little bit concerned that uh, the work has already started. I just heard tonight, um, even before we had a chance to vote on it. Um, but I, I don't know how we relay the message to uh, organizations in the city that should really wait until they get approval from the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holy. Any further discussion? Seeing none, can a clerk please call the roll? Ms. Renan? Yes. Ms. Atlier? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ordinance passes. Moving on to resolutions, cons consideration resolutions. Resolutions introduced. Ms. Fahey. Thank you, Mr. President. 
I notice resolution 164218R and ask for its introduction. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Mr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Referral to the Planning Committee. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Igo. Mr. President, I notice Resolution 174218 for introduction, and I'd also like to note that the, uh, the me supporting memorandum should be changed and not affect the resolution because to confirm the appointment of Chris Spencer as the Commissioner of Planning and Finance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Igo. Could the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council confirming the appointment of William D. Kelly as Corporation Council. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. And that is referred to the Law Committee. Thank you, sir. Ms. Apriles. Thank you, Mr. President. I recognize resolution 1842-18R and request its um, request introduction. Reading and introduction, please. Thank you. Can the clerk please read the resolution? A resolution calling on New York State Legislature to pass legislation creating a state commission on prosecutorial conduct. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. That is referred to the Public Safety Committee. Thank you, sir. Ms. Apriles. <laughs> Thank you, madam. I'm sorry, madam. <laughs> hey, it's April now. I'm sorry, it's I'm not sorry. January. <laughs> Thank you, Just Mr. Kidding. President. Just kidding. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, I recognize Resolution 194218R and request its introduction and passage. Thank you. Uh, can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution congratulate Mother Alice Olivia Fay on her 103rd, 103rd birthday. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Ms. Apriles. I just want to thank all of you for agreeing to co-sponsor. Um, Mother Bethea wanted to be here tonight, but given the weather, she could not. And so I will keep you posted on the celebration that we will have in the mayor's conference room. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Renee? Yes. Ms. Apriel? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Love. Thank you, Mr. President. I know the resolution 204218R and ask for passage. And ask for, excuse me, passage? Okay, thank you. Could the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution honoring Abby Lee Grace and naming Princeton Avenue between Lexington Avenue and Henry Johnson Boulevard in her honor. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Annette? Yes, co-sponsor. Ms. Apriles? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Ballard? Yes, co-sponsor, please. Mr. Conti? Yes, co-sponsor. Did I ask if all would like to be co-sponsors? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Continue your count. Thank you. Resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Fahey, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 2142-18R and ask for its introduction. Can the clerk please read the resolution? 
member of the Historic Resource Commission. Mr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. That's referral to the Planning Committee. Um, and Mr. President, I would like to ask majority consent to add resolution 224218R to tonight's agenda. Do I have a second on that motion? Uh, all those in favor? Those opposed? Motion passes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I now notice the introduction of ordinance 224218R and request passage and a vote thereon. Thank you. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council consenting to the transfer of funds which will affect the salary total in the Department of Fire and Emergency Services of for the 2018 budget. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Hernandez? Yes. Mr. Zachary? Yes. Mr. Gallery? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, resolution passes. Moving on to resolutions held. Mr. Conti. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, resolution 9.3118R is held. And Mr. President, I notice resolution 154118R request passage and a vote thereon. Thank you. Uh, can the clerk please call the roll? I mean, can the clerk please read the resolution? Is there any discussion on the resolution? Just, just quickly, Mr. President, uh, just to note, this resolution uh, is a home rule message for legislation that would do a two-year extender to the current pilot parallel with this, and we need to get this passed and up to the legislature so they can act. But parallel to this, we've begun discussions with those members who are more uh, most directly affected. Uh, either within the current uh, permit system or the surrounding areas to begin a discussion of modifications that we would like to see in the state legislation to address some concerns that we have, uh, you know, in, in terms of the, the sunset date, uh, the boundaries, uh, additional spaces that we can be allocated, et cetera. Uh, and we're going to continue those discussions with the goal of hopefully having a piece of legislation that can be introduced this year, um, and if it can be acted on, that would be great, but at least, at the very least, to begin to uh, begin that discussion of the types of modifications that we think we need in the state authorizing legislation, so that if we can't get it moved this year, uh, we can be uh, position ourselves well uh, to uh, try to get movement on that next year. But I think it's important that you know we move this one get, to get the current system extended, uh, begin discussions and get on the table a proposal for modifications that we need uh, and uh, to be adopted as well. So with that, I'd ask support for this resolution tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you for that, Council McConty. Um, as many of you know, I am a strong believer that there needs to be some adjustments, some updates to this policy. Um, I do understand the time sensitivity, um, and that's why I will be supporting this bill, because I don't want us to go backwards. I want us to move forward. So I appreciate the leadership and their support, and I look forward to the difficult discussions that we will have to make the adjustments that will hopefully benefit our residents. Thank you. Yes, co sponsor, please. Yes.
Uh, Ms. Ms. Fahey. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I just want to bring uh, this to all council members' attention. Uh, that's been going on. Uh, we, it's, actually, it's actually something we've been talking about for a while, but some of you may, may not be familiar with it. There's a very large public works project uh, that's being proposed, and it would, uh, um, it's to uh, create a, um, uh, a filtration and screening facility, and it is in the top of Lincoln Park, up near Toast. Uh, runs along parallel to Park Avenue there between Delaware Avenue and Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, we've had a cup, uh, it's a, a project, a $45 million sewer, uh, water sewer infrastructure project uh, under, being undertaken by our um, water department and uh, really one of the largest public works projects that the city has seen in, in many, many years. Um, there have been a couple of presentations uh, done on this uh, proposal. Uh, there's an additional one coming up this Monday, uh, the 23rd, at 6.30 p.m. at Toast. Um, uh, and it's uh, from 6.30 to about 8.30 p.m. It's very, going to be very important to get the word out about this. We've tried. Um, for the previous presentations, but it just seems like the community is, is waking up to this presentation or, or this proposal. Um, so it's important we get the word out widely. Uh, already there's a, a, a great deal of concern about the project um, uh, because as soon as you, you t begin to talk about sewers, water, sewers, sewage, uh, people are very concerned. But I would strongly recommend that people attend the presentation, get their, their concerns and their questions answered, because um, a lot of thought has gone into this uh, project. Um, so I will be getting information out to all council members about it. I would just ask that you share it with the community. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, but it is important that people find out what this is about. It's, it's not a sewage, uh, a sewage treatment plant. It is not. It, it, what it does is it takes the overflow uh, that would normally go into the Hudson River and it, and it disinfects it. And one of the comparisons that the engineers are using is, you know how you put the chlorine in the pool to keep the pool clean? Well, that's the level of disinfection that will happen with this overflow. The majority of the sewage in the combined sewer system, and this is a major trunk that runs through this part of Lincoln Park, does indeed go to a sewage treatment facility. What is being proposed here is not a sewage treatment plant. It's, uh, it's a screening and filtration uh, uh, facility, most of which will be underground, and it will stop the overflow after a heavy storm from going into the Hudson. So uh, I'm really the last person who should be talking about this, so that's why I'm encouraging folks to come to one of these presentations. It's not everyone's favorite topic, but gosh, it's a real important that our, our uh, sewers work uh, our sewers, our stormwater system work correctly. And I just want to say it has, uh, the area where they're doing it is a, there's a very large ravine that um, has overflow right now and it's had it for decades. And I have constituents who have smelled the odors and even gotten headaches from it. Um, and uh, it's a bad situation there, a deep ravine. There's other public safety issues there. So this project has the potential for really improving the quality of life of the people I represent who live in that neighborhood. Um, so again, thank you folks, and I, I encourage everyone to come and hear about this uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fahey. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to uh, take this moment to uh, commend and thank Councilwoman uh, Drew Dochette for her tireless effort and work um, during this uh, bonding period. Uh, she really made sure that all city departments were borrowing res uh, responsibly, and this will have a great benefit in the future for our city and our taxpayers. So thank you, Ms. Duchesne.
Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Mr. O'Brien. A couple of points. I did want to build on what Kathy spoke about. As I recall, and I think this is more of a legal question, I believe that New York City, about 25 or 30 years ago, did a similar thing in Van Cortlandt Park. It was, since it was a park, as is Lincoln Park, the legal determination was it required an alienation proceeding. It had to go through the state legislature, even though it was ultimately returned to being a park. So I think that's something that should be checked on. I haven't discussed it with the water department, um, although I know in this case, the whole thing is part of a consent decree that we entered into with New York State a number of years ago. But uh, that may be a little hurdle that should be looked into. Uh, the Van Cortlandt Park case, temporary alienation of a park to install a filtration water treatment system. Yeah. Yes, it's miscellaneous. Uh, thank you, uh, Council Member O'Brien. Uh, yes, actually it has been brought up about the, the park alienation issue. And uh, initially, the water department uh, did not think that they were going to need it. They had uh, looked, uh, asked legal counsel regarding it, but they've looked more closely, and now I do believe they are considering going through the alienation process. So I appreciate that you brought that up. And, and just so folks, there's a lot, also a lot of uh, folks are thinking this is a done deal and all that. Well, you know, there's a, they've worked very hard to put this proposal together. But this is an example of, it's not a done deal. They really want to hear from the public about their concerns. So any kind of changes that need to be made, they can make those adjustments. So uh, please get the word out to your constituents that we're listening about you know, what needs to change, what are the problems. Thank you. Thank I you. wanted to finish on, on another topic. On the uh, issue, uh, the public comment or some dis uh, a comment on uh, public access. Um, we don't, I know Richard had indicated he thinks he's going to reconstitute the committee. We don't have anything in writing yet, so there are, I believe, five applications pending for the vacant council appointment and for the vacant mayor's appointment. I believe the mayor is waiting for us to rule on them before she makes a decision. That's what she did the last time. So. We don't have anything in writing to act on, uh, and I am, and the other point, which I, I did attend the last meeting, which was last Thursday, and there was not a quorum. There were three people out of 11 members, and unfortunately, none of the council appointees are present. Not to disparage them, because they have all, at the various times, contributed, but uh, again, it's a frustrating process, I know for members of the public to wait uh, to see something happen. Although, I have, I must say, I have been impressed with Mary Rosak's leadership. I think she has a perfect attendance, as well as at least two other board, board members, and uh, they're making an effort, effort in terms of the PEG board leadership to have printed agendas, to follow them, to get information out to everybody. But, if a, peg board, if a peg ad hoc committee is going to be created, to, I think we have to know what our mandate is. Is it just to review the pending applications? Um, or is it going to be something more? Uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Mr. <coughs> Shea? Mr. Shea? Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Council Member Robinson, for those kind words. I do, uh, I do appreciate uh, we have all new members on the Finance Committee and, and uh, the, uh, the conversation has been uh, great um, and uh, I appreciated people showing up uh, on time. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, absences are uh, unavoidable, but uh, it's been a really good start uh, working with the, with the committee. I, uh, do want to be done with bond ordinances. So with that, I'm going to ask to withdraw uh, ordinance 12.21.18 and 17.21.18. Those are the um, building infrastructure uh, bonds for the uh,
police department and for the fire department that we consolidated in another bond. Thank you. Mr. Ballard, did you have your hands up? I just wanted to respond to the comment that uh, from the public that there's no connection between us and PEG. As Mike mentioned, there were council members at the PEG meeting um, as well to hear and listen to what people's concerns were. Um, and they have made progress, like Mike mentioned. They've hired a coordinator. That coordinator is looking to do inventory of all of their equipment. Once that inventory is done, they're gonna create a schedule to reopen the, uh, the, the PEG offices and get stuff up and running. So there has been progress done. Um, what, is it as quickly as we'd like it to be? No, I think everyone can agree to that. But I think it's not fair to say that there's not some type of connection and there's no, uh, no affiliation or working together. People were there, we were present, and uh, we're able to report back to our council members what we heard. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Conti. Hey, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Before we adjourn, I just wanted to also address the PEG issue. Uh, as reflected in our me minutes for the April 2nd meeting, I did announce that the ad hoc committee would be reappointed. Um, it's my fault that we hadn't gotten the, the specific written charge out, but as indicated, the first charge to the committee would be to interview applicants for the existing vacancy on the board. Um, um, and I think we have a couple of applications there. Uh, so that will happen. So, you know, my fault that I didn't get that out yet. Uh, I will get that done tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, the uh, committee would also be on taking care of that. I think there might be a, a, a the, uh, a term up for reappointment also or an expiration, but we need to clarify that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, I think I'd like to see the committee in time uh, identified manner uh, to do the additional oversight. Uh, and if, if we're moving forward on things and if the, you know, we wanna make sure that we just have things in place and that the system is operating the way it's supposed to be operating, et cetera, uh, and so, that would be the other charge of the committee, just to, again, to look in and make sure we are uh, in the right direction. I'm, I'm a little disappointed in terms of the, the, the council appointed members not being at the last board meeting, especially since this is a standing meeting date uh, that has been long established as far as when the PEG board meets. So it should always be on everyone's schedule. Uh, but uh, hopefully that's one of the issues that we can look into, or the committee can look into, as far as uh, if there are issues there. Uh, with that, if there is no further business, I would then make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion passes. Meeting adjourned.